Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Today, I want to cover two planets that are absolutely dominating the sky right now. But first, I want to talk about a meteor shower that's reaching its best appearance tonight, August 11th. Tonight is the peak of the Perseid meteor shower. Now, every year around August 12th, the Earth travels through the debris stream of a comet called Swift Tuttle, which orbits the Sun every 133 years. It was last close to the Sun in 1992, but that doesn't stop the meteor shower from happening. Little bits of dust and rubble left behind in the orbit of this comet strike Earth's atmosphere at 40 miles per second, creating short bursts of light known as meteors or shooting stars. The debris stream is fairly spread out, so you might have seen some Perseid meteors already over the past few weeks, and you could continue to see them until the end of August. But tonight and early tomorrow morning is when Earth will be traveling through the densest part of the debris, and you can expect to see many more meteors during the peak. On any given night, you can expect to see a random meteor once every five minutes or so. But in the case of the Perseids and other showers, you can potentially see more than one per minute. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but if you're out there looking for an hour, you could potentially see dozens of meteors during that period. This year's Perseid meteor shower has all the makings of a great one. Now, the moon can be a huge factor, with a nearly full moon washing out the faintest meteors. This year, the moon is a thin crescent that will set by the time the show really gets started, so it won't be a factor at all. Starting around 10 p.m. tonight, you can start to see a pretty good number, but the real show will pick up after midnight, when the constellation of Perseus starts climbing higher in the sky. He's in the northeast later in the night this time of the year, and follows Cassiopeia as she climbs over the horizon. By about 10.30 p.m. here in Chicago, you'll see Cassiopeia well up in the northeast, and the bright star Capella just climbing over the horizon. And in between the two, the stars of Perseus, the hero. Meteor showers are named for the parts of the sky the meteors appear to come from. All of the Perseid meteors will appear to point back to the constellation of Perseus. So when you see a meteor, trace the path back across the sky, and if it points to Perseus, you'll know you saw a Perseid. The area of the sky the meteors appear to radiate from is called the Radiant. There are other well-known showers like Leonids in November, which has a Radiant in Leo the Lion, and the Geminids in December, with a Radiant in the Gemini Twins. Both of those are cold weather showers here in the Northern Hemisphere, but the Perseids are ideally timed so you can count on a reasonably warm night to lie out and see some meteors. Now, most observers in a dark sky tonight can expect to see 60 to 80 meteors per hour. Now, keep in mind, that's across the whole sky, so you don't want to just stare at Perseus and wait. Ideally, you can lie down on a blanket in an open field and look up. Find the darkest, most open area you can and look up as high as is comfortable. Even if you are in light polluted skies, you can still expect to see some Perseids. I've seen many meteors in Chicago throughout the years, although you will need a little bit more patience as you wait. The dimmer meteors will be drowned out, but keep in mind there are some very bright ones to be seen, and those can occur especially often with the Perseids. Now, while you're glancing around the sky, you'll almost certainly notice two very bright points of light that are well up in the southeast as darkness falls, and by midnight, are absolutely brilliant in the southern sky. These are the planets Jupiter and Saturn, and August is the best month this year to check them out. Saturn was at its closest to Earth for the year on August 1st, and Jupiter will reach opposition on August 19th. Opposition occurs when a planet is opposite the Sun in the sky. Every year, Earth catches up with Jupiter in its orbit, since Jupiter orbits more slowly as it is farther from the Sun. At one point, Earth will be essentially in between the Sun and Jupiter. So Earth will be closest to Jupiter at that point, and Jupiter will appear brightest in the sky and will be giving its best views through a telescope. Jupiter will reach that point officially on the 19th, and Saturn is just past its opposition. So right now is really the best time to see these two. Now, the higher an object is over the horizon, the clearer the view will be through binoculars or a telescope. So if you're using either of those, I would recommend staying up quite a bit later so you can get to see these planets when they're due south and at their highest. 
Saturn is a real treat through a telescope. The rings will show up even in a small telescope, and in larger scopes, you can really start to get a three-dimensional impression through the eyepiece. They're tilted towards Earth right now at a very nice angle, and the rings extend hundreds of thousands of miles from end to end. They reflect a lot of sunlight, and when angled like this, they add significantly to the brightness of Saturn in the sky. Consider Saturn's diameter is smaller than Jupiter's, but the extent of the rings is much bigger than Jupiter's disk. The rings appear solid, but they're really made up of particles, ranging from a grain of sand up to about the size of a house. And despite their huge extent, on average, they're only about 30 feet thick. Well, Jupiter is much closer to us and brighter in the sky than Saturn, but it doesn't have an easily visible ring system. Now, it more than makes up for that with an amazing array of cloud bands, storms, and moons to look for. Even with just binoculars, you should expect to see some of Jupiter's moons. There are four moons that you can see through binoculars called the four Galilean moons. These are named after Galileo, who first used a telescope to look at the night sky and discovered all sorts of things, like craters on the moon and the moons of Jupiter. So what if you have a telescope to look at Jupiter? Well, even a very small scope will start to sew the, the disk of Jupiter, and you'll also begin to see things with larger scopes, like the cloud bands and maybe even the Great Red Spot. Jupiter is what we often call a gas giant, so you're looking at the cloud tops of Jupiter as you observe it. Jupiter spins once every 10 hours, so which side is facing Earth changes pretty rapidly. So if one night the Great Red Spot isn't visible, there's a good chance that it'll be visible over the next couple of nights. The Great Red Spot is basically a huge storm on Jupiter. It's been raging for hundreds of years. At its largest observed size, it was about three times the diameter of Earth, although it is quite a bit smaller now, a little bit less than twice Earth's diameter. So definitely get out there and see Saturn and Jupiter at their closest for the year. Even with the naked eye, they're a treat, and you might be surprised at just how much you can see with a small backyard scope. Well, that's what we've got for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.